let off completely because of you know previous good behaviour slash never being actually pulled up for bad behaviour. Yeah. Um, because I think the only charge he's ever had was that fight he had with Epilowaki Ep- about eight years ago. Yeah, that was never really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I reckon uh, he'll get no games, but. Be guilty and have to get on three hundred quid over. That's yeah, my I verdict. suspect that'll be it as well. Yeah, um, James Childs yes. got in touch. Uh, Childs with an apostrophe S. There you go. Uh, said, "Great opportunity to show my heavy bias against both Hull and Leeds at the same time. I hate <laughs> them both just as much as I hate the rest of the league. That's why I keep blowing my whistle following blatant penal- penalties." Um, laughs maniacally while stroking a cat there you go street get stage directions there you are fantastic <laughs> okay I suspect that might not have been the real James Child uh, Joshua's granddad who definitely was the real Joshua's granddad got in touch and said he cut final win two day piss up and then having to back up on Thursday a huge ask a bit more composure at times could have seen FC get closer not aided by injuries missed Talanoa's carries out of defence in the second half uh, man of the man by uh, hang on Man of the match by um, Little Rob, but he should have been on that pitch for the should he have been on that pitch for the last twenty minutes. Poor ref and video throughout the game. We did win tries from blatant forward passes is two one. Snade show he is more than just a kicker. <laughs> a lot of thoughts going on in that one. Yeah, we'll have to come back to some of these things, I suppose. Um Scoot. Yeah. Oh, sorry, do you want to come back to them now? No, I was going to say about the Thursday thing, though. We've talked, we did talk yeah. about this one when the fixtures were released, and it's a bit ridiculous. Mm. I wonder who's to blame, because there's four parties in this game being put on, weren't there, really? Yeah. There was the RFL, the broadcasters, and the two clubs themselves. Yeah. Now, when they've got to the position that London and Warrington are playing on Saturday night at 8 o'clock, why couldn't they have had a think and thought, let's shove this on at 6 o'clock? Yeah. On makes, Saturday would make perfect sense, wouldn't it? Mind blown. Not, well, no, do you know what? All. Mind blown. Not for me. The mind is not blown for me. This is exactly what rugby league does, and this is exactly what we do. It gives it sometimes the, these to help ourselves out of the clubs, the the league, and the the broadcaster do actually put them back themselves into a corner with some of the yeah. decisions, don't they? Absolutely. Scoots said the old man's car broke down before we left. Thankfully, it got us home from Wembley, so I was so I was left to drive. In brackets, no female driver jokes. I passed first time. I right, get the chip off your shoulder. It didn't occur to me to make any female driver jokes. It didn't to, to me until I read it. Oh, women yeah. can drive just as well as men, and men can drive just as badly as women. It's we can people. All, people can drive well yeah. or badly. Yeah, <laughs> can drive just as badly as women. All right, Partridge, <laughs> carry on. Ask for the no. I mean, we're all <laughs> we're all we can all be shit. I tell you what, my uncle Liam, he's he's a man and he can't park for shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for the match. You we, inherited that off him, by the way. Well, I'm better than him. <laughs> we started the match down four players and lost another two during the game. Had a debatable sim in as well as conceding two questionable tries. All factors which weren't going to help after the weekend we had previously. Still, we didn't disgrace ourselves, but I do think anything above fourth will be un achievable. Massive two matches coming up now against Wigan and Wakefield. Joshua's highlight of the night was being a, given a free lolly by the man in the corner shop near the ground when he told him it was his birthday. You're telling a lot more people it's his birthday nowadays than I thought. I enjoy that that was shops. very one-sided um, yeah. Happy birthday Joshua. Yes, very happy returns mate. I enjoy that was very one-sided hallway. Now then lads. Now then lads, let me guess. Hull FC lost so it's ref's fault. Sky were bagging the ref as were the coaches. Poor form all round. Brian Mack does have a point remilking penalties. While refs let players do it, then players will keep doing it. He was spot on really. Ellis got what he deserved um, but FC complain. As for Burrow's headbutt, he was lucky to complete the tackle. FC get beat by Lee's usual service is resumed. <laughs> He was not lucky. Oh, God, we'll come back to it. Oh, you're an agent provocateur. I think he's just trying to be a bit of a wind-up merchant there. I'm sure he's not even that blinded to to these things. Brian Davies we finished with. He says, um, in contrast to the opening line we had on our first review, Mm. Brian, in the last review on this game, says, not not the best game you'll ever see. FC were tired and resulted in lots of sloppy play, bringing a serious bringing a series of penalties. Lees were poor and should really have taken FC apart, but Rhino simply don't have enough in attack to do so. No one will fear going to Headingley in the semi-finals. People will blame the ref for all the penalties, but it was the players' fault. Some games are crap, and this was one of them. Did you think it was a crap game? I actually thought it was so close to being a really enjoyable game to watch, yeah. and two sets of players absolutely ruined that for me. 
two sets of players completely ruined the game mm. because of all the moaning, yeah. all the penalties, all the um, things that they did that took the game away from the referee's control. And I think James Child is a referee that suffers from having players take the game away oh, from his control, unfortunately. And sadly, sometimes he's not strong enough to Nip it stay in with it. Um, I think he wasn't helped at all by the officials with him in this game mm. because how that touch judge didn't give, uh, didn't tell him he needed to have a serious think about a yellow card for Rob Burrow, yeah. I do not know. Now, when the video referee's telling him, yeah, go for the dangerous contact, which I think is what must have happened there when they, they all got together for the Gareth Ellis one, why they can't do the same for that one. No. Now, there was the Michael's elbow on young Walker, weren't there, as well. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that that would have been as clear-cut for any of the officials to to, to pull up because it was more a collision kind of scenario. Um, So I think that one, like putting that one on them is a little bit harsh, and Sky tried to because, let's face it, they love stirring the pot with the referees, unfortunately. It helps them create a narrative that actually hurts them in the long run because fans are turning off the game yeah. and turning away from the sport, apparently, according to what they all say, whether they're talking out their asses or not, some of these fans, mm. because of the match officials. Yeah. Well, the match officials' narrative is driven by the broadcaster in this in scenarios like this yeah. because the people to blame for this game was not... Mm was not the referee who was constantly blowing his whistle. It was the players who were constantly infringing the same rules or not giving him a choice, not giving him a chance. I've spoke about this before. It's the it's the at-the-ruck issue where the ball comes out, where where the players aren't giving him a choice because they're not... They're, they're, or where players get pushed over as yeah. well because the, the referee has to make some sort of decision here. Um half the crowd are going to think it's right and half the crowd are think it's going to think it's wrong and he only has a split second to do it. So things like the Danny Washbrook putting the ball on the back of the player who just tackled him and getting given a penalty. It's never a penalty for me. Washbrook shouldn't be doing that. No. Just like we spoke about in previous games this season, there was a, an incident where Sean O'Loughlin did something similar. There was an incident where uh, lots of players have done things similar um, and they shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. But... They're getting away with it because the ref has a split second and the ball's come out and a decision has to be made. Um, and then as long as the referees constantly give the same decision, we would be okay with that apparently because everyone just wants to see consistency from the referees. But they don't just want to see consistency re- from the referees because then they have a go at them for decisions like that. It's really hard and it's the players that's causing that. Yeah. Simple. No, I, I, I agree with, with everything you just said. Then that's a hashtag minor mark, aren't we? Going? Sorry, yeah. Early day. And then, but it, it does seem like there's been a sea change in the last... Do you know what? It feels like it's been in the last three months for me. It probably is more than that. But this whole playing for penalties thing that's becoming apparent... It seems. To, do you think it's because we're looking for it more and we're more aware of it? Or do you think the players are... I think it's because the teams have become more closely matched. Yeah. So the game's tend to be closer physically certainly the games are closer Mm. and and like endurance levels are closer and all that sort of stuff the professionalism of the worst teams and the best teams is closer Mm. now this was two good teams but it's still that's the way it is and in that circumstance it's so much harder to make meters and it's so much easier just to get a penalty Mm. and so players try to get penalties but similarly players need to slow them down because quick play of the balls absolutely kill teams yeah. in this day and age because that's kind of where the game's got to in terms of you need to get them scattered to get any sort of space. Yeah. So I think it's... Well, maybe this is where that reduction so, of numbers idea it's so hard. Some. It's so hard to address it, mm. but you just have to think, if you were a player, you probably like the sport, most of you do, you probably grew up watching it and want to be entertained by it. What do you want to see more? Someone go back on and wrap their hands underneath a player to make sure they get up a little bit slower and do it what might be called legitimately, but still come on. Mm. Or do you want to see players get off quickly so that something else can happen? Yeah. Now, maybe we need to think about the 10-metre rule because they're only slowing people down at the rock. Yeah. Because you've got to go back, because the rest of the team's got to go back 10 metres, otherwise they'll be given offside or what have you. Maybe we need to say, make it eight, make it. I don't know about going all the way back to five. I think the size of the players these days and the speed of them, maybe that 
close it down too much. I don't know. I don't know. There's things to be thought of like yeah. that. Maybe making it eight meters. Maybe just sort of letting things go a bit more at the rock. Mm. Um, from both ways of thinking, but but penalising where people are trying to cheat yeah. rather than where people are just taking a bit longer because of the position they've got in. Yeah. So instead of the ones where, like the Kyle Amor one on Friday night, where he got in the ruck, the ball was played onto him, he was definitely in the ruck, he definitely didn't make an attempt to get out of the ruck, but he also wasn't really trying to cheat. Yeah. Maybe just say none of them are penalties anymore. Until it becomes a problem, because it, if, when it becomes apparent, like the passing thing this year. Yeah. So when it becomes apparent that players are doing it to take an, an unfair advantage, start penalising it again. Yeah. Until they do, don't. But come out and say these things so yeah. that it's clear for everyone. Well, that passing the ball into people thing got cleared up like that, didn't it? Pretty much, but it still happens occasionally, and the refs still almost have no choice. Mm. But yeah, pre- pretty much it did. And I think these are things that I just think they could be done like... I don't know, we'll obviously talk a, a bit more about inconsistencies. I think the other thing on this one, as well as the video ref getting involved on one of the of the like foul play, but not on the other. I, Ellis was right to get Simbin for me. I don't mm. think he should cop a ban for it. I think Simbin's sufficient, but it was putting a player in a dangerous position that he could have avoided. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the Leeds attacking player who put himself in the dangerous position. It was the, the, whole, the way the whole player's got around him, yeah. and now maybe it was the other player coming in that helped put him in the awkward position, but it wasn't the Leeds player himself that put no. himself there. No. So I think that was the fair call. I don't want to see those kind of risky things going on. That's it. Um, and it hammers home to the players that that's their duty of care. Exactly. But why can they have a long conflab about that and not really have a proper chat about Rob Burrow putting his head into someone's face? Yeah. I, I don't know. Then one of the themes of this weekend for me was definitely the ref- video refereeing situation with the try no try. I'm mm. going to forget about the forward pass ones because there yeah. were a few borderline forward pass ones, but some of them, the more I watched them, the more I didn't know. Like the Burrow went to Sutcliffe, mm-hmm. the more I watched that, Burrow was sort of starting to run back a little bit. So he passed it and it went out of his hands forward, but the ball didn't travel forward because he wasn't travelling forward. If you see what I mean, yeah, he was yeah. going sideways, sort of veering a bit and then. He threw the ball, but it actually went flat. Then there was one in yeah, the yeah. middle of the field from Hull, I think, Snade to someone. And uh, that, again, for me, was like very close to call. Um, but it, uh, first p- first look, it definitely forward. Second and third look, I wasn't as sure. So there was, they trained it up. The Garbert try is one of those ones where if it goes up try, it's almost impossible to overturn. Now we've got another one coming on Friday. We've got a couple more on the Saturday game against Warrington to talk about that we'll get to. Mm. But I'm getting fed up of this. I feel like it's a change of position. We always grew up with benefit of the doubt to the attacking side. Yeah. Now it's gone beyond benefit of doubt because it's be- become like you have to have absolute proof. And I-, I feel like referees on a video ref game will send something up as a try but get it checked. And I'm not convinced that they will give that as a try. If they didn't have the video. If they didn't have the referee, video referee. Right. But the burden of proof is such a level that nothing gets overturned, mm. it feels like. If it, like the James Very Carey at Wembley situation. Yeah. He was trying to talk himself into a situation where he didn't have to give that try. Mm-hmm. Because the on-field decision was no try. Yeah. That's how it felt like with all these try ones as well trying to talk themselves into believing a little bit of the arm was still on the ball there from Garbert, so he hadn't lost control of it, so he grounded it. Whereas, really, it had come from his hand by the time it hit the floor for me. Yeah. So I understand why it went up... Why, well, I understand why it went up as a try, because it was a close sort of call. Yeah. But, I do, but I'm not sure that it would have done in a non-televised game. And I'm not sure that referees are convinced in these try calls they're giving mm. in video referee games, personally. I think what happens is is that because almost invariably the video ref- well invariably the video refereed games are the televised games aren't they so the referees are in front of the cameras they're under that bit more scrutiny I think they put themselves under pressure to perform well and in doing so do what you said send send things up as I've got a try but can you confirm it for me and they use that as an out maybe to 
and, and, to make sure that they're not if it get, does get and it's okay anyway. as long as they always they can say well, I sent it up it's, like, it's okay as long as they always do that but it just feels like because one went the other way in the Challenge Cup final the biggest game so far